welcome once again to Grow Your Own Part 3. Uh, let's crack on. So Sophie, over to you. Ah, all right. So in the last lesson, um, you'll remember that we um, created uh, some beautiful circuits with two lights on and we got those lights to flash in a beautiful pattern. And that's great, but I'm sure you will remember that some, you'll re agree with me that sometimes having lights that are always on or always flashing can get a little bit um, on the annoying side. So what we're going to do today um, is we are going to um, we are going to uh, control those lights using a button. So the lights will uh, be on when we press the button and they'll be off when we don't press the button. Really useful um, thing to do. And I'm just going to spotlight CJ for a moment so that you can see uh, the button that they are holding up. It's a tiny little thing if you've got it in a physical, uh, if you've got your physical Arduinos with four little legs and a little button, I guess, on the top. Um, Fab, thank you, CJ. Um, and we're going to use that to control our uh, buttons. So if you could all go to Tinkercad for me, we will get started creating our circuits, coding our circuits. And like before, um, we'll do a little bit online on Tinkercad, and then CJ will show us in real life. Um, and then we'll um, switch back and forth a bit. OK, so I'm just going to share my screen so that you can see uh, see the code here. Um, um, once, you're, once you've joined Tinkercad, we just want to create a new circuit. Now, that's what I'm going to do to get started. But you could also, if you've saved your circuit from last week, we're going to start with exactly the same circuit. So you could just um, duplicate that. And I will show you how to do that. So um, let's see. This was the circuit that we made together last week, um, I think. Uh, Yep. So if you go to this little cog thing here, um, it says options. You can click on that and then click duplicate. Uh, and then you can duplicate it. You can call it another thing. Always a good idea because this way, if you change anything, it's not going to, you're not going to lose your old circuit. And then you can change the name like that. Uh, so you can change the name up here. But we're going to uh, just very quickly go back over the circuit that we did at the end of last week, um, just so that everybody is up. But we'll be doing this quite quickly. OK. And if you uh, so I'll ask you um, if you know what the next step is um, uh, when I ask, do pop it in the chat, um, because it's always nice to, to see what people are thinking as well. So are we up here? Um, if you pop your uh, pop a reaction on your um, thing, just to show me that you're ready to get started. Um, so you've got you can raise your hand or pop reactions on. Yes, Fab, hum. We've got a, a thumbs up, a tick. Brilliant. More thumbs up. Um, fantastic. So we've got a bunch of people who are ready. So we will get started. So as always as before we're going to start with our beautiful arduino we're going to pull this over um, and pop that in our workspace over here and then we're going to get a breadboard this wonderful helpful piece of kit and we're going to pop it up there now it doesn't matter that it goes over the top because we're not going to use that side of it um, uh, and cj do you just want to show i think you were showing the um the breadboard as well. Yes, yeah, so remember that's what the breadboard looks like a fun white piece of plastic, I think, but very clever on the inside. Thank you, CJ. Uh, and then we're going to get our LEDs. Um, so I'm going to pull two LEDs across, um, one here, a nice red one, and I'm going to put my second one on straight away. But I'm going to make a red one and a green one. Okay, all right, and then we need to connect our LEDs to our Arduino, okay? So I'm gonna connect the red one to pin 10 and the green one to pin 11. And I'm gonna do that with some wires. So I'm gonna go from here, pin 10, or sorry, 
the LED all the way to pin 10, and then I'm going to move my Arduino so it's nice and straight. You don't have to do that. I just really like straight lines and right angles because I'm a bit weird like that. Um, so that goes straight down like that. And then I'm going to take my other one and go to pin 11. Like that. Nice and simple. Um, now, if you pop a reaction up, that will just show me that you're ready for the next step. And also have a think about what the next step is. We connect another component uh, between the LEDs and our minus line here. Can anyone tell me um, what uh, the um, what they've got and uh, what they think it is? Um, so what component do we pop in that goes from here to here? Any guesses? while we're just waiting for everybody to catch up. Although actually you're all doing super well. Fantastic. We've got Isabel Parham, brilliant resistor. We are going to put some resistors in here to make our circuits work. All right, so we're gonna grab a resistor, pull it over here, um, pop it there. So that goes from the straight leg of the LED, from that column there to the minus line. All right, and we don't want it to be one kilo ohm. We want it to be 220 ohms. So we change that to there. Um, so because of the uh, because of the settings that we've put the chat on, um, you can send messages to any of the um, hosts, uh, but I don't think, uh, but you can't send it to all of the hosts. So I can see people saying resistor, which is awesome. Um, fab. Okay, so we're going to get one there and one here. So don't worry, uh, if, but if you want to send Dane a message, make sure you pick Dane because otherwise he's not going to see it. All right, so another resistor, we're going to pop an ohm here, 220 there. And then uh, I need to draw, draw another wire, our last wire to make the same circuit that we made last week. And it will go from here, from this minus line. And who can tell me what uh, pin on the Arduino it goes to? Can anybody remember? Pop it in the chat. GND, fantastic. You're on it. This is brilliant. Um, well done, Irish. Well done, everybody. Uh, so I'm going to pop a line going from here. Sorry, not a line, a wire. Um, that goes from here uh, all the way down to ground. And I'm going to change the color of my wire. Now, you'll remember that uh, CJ spoke about um, the colors of the wire and how we normally use particular colors of wire when we were going to ground um, last week. So, CJ, I think you use black normally, don't you? If you're going to, if you're going to the ground. Yep. So I'm going to use black as well now. Pop it in there. So if you can't, uh, if your computer keyboard is getting a bit stuck, uh, is a bit sticky and you can't type exactly 220 because you can't type a zero uh, or something uh, into uh, your resistor, that's okay. Just put 221. It's fine. It's, it has to be around 220, but it doesn't matter if it's 221 or 223 um, or anything. So don't worry about that. Okay. So this is the circuit that we had um, yesterday. No, not yesterday, Sophie. Last week. I know how time works, everyone. It's fine. Okay, and I think that I can see Dane just laughing at me because I don't understand the days of the week. It's okay. It's all right. Time is relative. Besides, this is all on demand in the future. So the future's happened. I don't know. Yes. That is true. <laughs> yes. We're, we could be, people could be watching us in the future. Time's it's relative. Quantum. It's all quantum. It's true. <laughs> Relativity and quantum don't like each other, though. But that's a whole other. That's a whole other session. Um, DJ, would you like to do this bit of the circuit in real life um, to get started, and then we will do the new bit, the adding the button. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, All right. So I'm going to I'm going to stop sharing my screen so that uh, we can make CJ all big. Um, okay, and I'm going to keep it consistent with yours. Um, I will follow your setup of the um, 
the Tinker CAD version. Obviously, if you've already got your LEDs in place from last week, this is just the recap. And also, it, again, it doesn't matter how you set them up as long as all of the pins are in the right place. I'm going to follow Sophie's be consistent with Sophie's Tinkercad version today. But if you've got the LEDs in place as last week, that's not a problem, just for people who might not have that. Okay, so going down now to the breadboard. So we have got our first LED. So we're going to take our LED and put the longer end into um we'll place it into e9 and e11 so the longer end is going to go into e9 and the shorter end into e11 so the positive long end is in there e9 and the shorter ends in e11 okay now we'll grab our other led and we're going to do a very similar thing, but instead of E9 and E11, we're going to go into E2 and E4. So the long end is going to go into E2. The so long end E2 and short end E4. So we now have our two LEDs, and these are mystery color LEDs. So we'll find out what colors these are going to be. Uh, so that'll be a nice surprise. So we've got longer end in E2 and shorter end in E4. Great. So what we need now is our two 220 ohm resistors. And we are placing one end of the resistor into D4. That's going to the, in line with the shorter end of the LED. And then the other end is going into the minor strip, as you saw in Sophie's Tinkercad. But obviously, as I said, if you've already got your LEDs in place, not to worry, this is exact, gonna have exactly the same um, effect when we turn everything on. So we've got one end, end of the resistor in the minor strip and the other end is going into D4. That should be, in line with your short leg of the LED. Okay, so we're gonna do exactly the same with another 220 ohm resistor. So another 220 ohm resistor for our other LED. So one end is going into the blue minus strip on the breadboard. These are a bit fiddly when they're really long legs. One end in E into the blue minor strip, and the other end is going to go into D11. So that's in line with the short leg of the LED. Okay. Now for our pin wires. So we'll take, I'm using red and orange. So I'm going to place one end into pin 10 on the Arduino. Pin 10. And then the other end is going to go into um, D9. And that's in line with the long leg of one of our LEDs. Pin 10 and D9 on the breadboard. And then we get our other colored wire. We go for our other pin, which is pin 11, like Sophie's Tinkercad version. And then the other end is going to go to D2, which should be in line with the positive, the long end leg, the long leg of the other LED. And we've got our final, um, final bit of connection to complete the circuit. So we get our ground wire i'm using black and we'll have one end in the minus strip of the breadboard and the other end is going to the gnd ground pin on the arduino 
so that's hopefully that light's not blurring it but you can sort of vaguely see that and it's the same again as, as Tink, uh, Sophie's on there so that's now our completed section that's our LED recap so um, soon we will have the button in place and be able to turn these guys on okay Fab. thank you so much CJ um, right uh, just bringing myself up so you can all see me again um, so has everybody got that far I'm just going to share my screen so that we can do the next bit together yep I've got some ticks fantastic some thumbs up Laura I'm glad that you're <laughs> Laura's thumb is up um, and Lucas all right we're all going okay so the next thing we want to do is we want to add a button to our um, uh, to our circuit and that button is going to be connected to the Arduino so that we can essentially get the Arduino to ask the button a question. The Arduino is going to say button are you pressed and the button will then send a signal back to the Arduino saying yep I'm pressed or no I'm not pressed uh, and depending on what the answer is the Arduino will then tell the lights to turn on or to, to, to be off. Okay, so um, you can find the button uh, right underneath the resistor um, called push button. So you pull that one over just like before. And we're gonna pop it over here. So we're gonna put it so that two of the legs are on the rows um, down, uh, down on this side, uh, down on this half of the breadboard and the other two legs are up here. Uh, or on the other half of the breadboard. So it should go across the center bit. CJ, do you want to show the center bit on the breadboard in real life? Just because this bit is sometimes a bit tricky. Hang on, I'm going to, wait, I'll stop sharing so you can see that. You can absolutely use the, um, the physical uh, circuit from last week. Brilliant, thank you, CJ. Um, so you can use exactly the same physical circuit as last week. We're just going to add bits to it. Um, all right, let's share my screen again. Now, obviously, we want to connect our circuit to the breadboard. No, that was complete nonsense. I'm so sorry, everyone. We want to connect our button to the Arduino. I'll, I'll get the hang of this words thing soon. So we're going to connect the button from this uh, pin uh, from this uh, little leg of the button on the right hand side I'm going to connect it to pin three now I'm going to make my wire go all the way over here and then back and this way and you'll see why in a minute it'll look tidier I promise and I'm going to change the color of my wire because this isn't going to ground so I'm going to make it yellow because that's a nice bright cheerful color now, when you are doing circuits, the colors of the wires don't really matter, but they do make it easier to debug like we've talked about. And so typically what I like to do is if I'm sending a signal out, so I'm sending an instruction to my LED, I use a green wire, but if I'm getting information back, are you gonna use a yellow wire? So I'm getting information from my push button over here. Okay, so I need uh, that. I also need to, uh, a resistor, okay, because uh, just like with the LEDs, I need to reduce the amount of energy that goes through it. So I'm going to get a resistor. I'm going to pull that over and I'm going to pop it. Um, oh, sorry, in here. So from this ground, just like the other resistors, to that same pin that the wire is coming off. OK. All right. And now next, buttons are a bit different from LEDs and that they need another um, we need to give them some extra power, um, some constant power going um, going to it. So we're going to use this line here, this plus line, and we're going to connect it to the, a power socket on the Arduino. So I'm going to draw a line, uh, draw a wire from the leg on the left-hand side all the way down to that. And because this is a power wire, I'm going to color it red like that. Okay. 
So give me a wave or um, do a reaction uh, when uh, when you um, when you're at that point. Fab. Oh, Laura, I love the smiley face reaction. That's great. We've got some thumbs up. We've got some ticks. Anybody else there? Fab. Oh, we've got a an OK sign as well. Brilliant. Thumbs up. What size resistor for the button? That is an excellent question. I'm really sorry. I forgot to say that entirely. Um, that's because this is the easy one. Um, uh, so this resistor for the button, we want to use one kilo ohm uh, of resistor. Now, um, that is the um, the default one. So that's the one that Tinkercad automatically puts in if you don't change it. So you don't need to change it. But if you want to change them, remember, you can just click on your resistor and then change the um, uh change the resistance there okay fab now you will remember i'm sure uh, that uh, it's really important to have a complete circuit uh, when we're doing anything and at the moment we don't have a complete circuit for our button because you'll see that the the um, uh, it goes up here uh, and to the resistor and then it goes down. But this line here, this power lead doesn't go anywhere. This isn't connected to anything. So we want to make sure that this is connected to the Arduino. And we're going to use um, uh, this five volt one down here at the bottom because the button needs that power in order to make it work. So I'm gonna draw one final um, wire that goes from the plus line on the red all the way down and then along and then up here to the five volt. I'll just zoom in a bit so you can see that this is on the five volts. You can see me fiddling to make sure that this is completely straight um, because I like things to be all straight and um, straight and neat like that. Okay. Okay, and then that is the complete circuit that we are going to be working with and coding, uh, which is very exciting. Um, give us a wave or um, pop a, put a reaction in the chat uh, or something. And um, uh, brilliant. And then CJ will show you in the physical circuit. I can see that's, oh, someone's got a clown. That's a brilliant one. Um, that they've put in. Uh, and Yusuf has already coded it, which is amazing. Yusuf, see if you can make the, the lights do uh, interesting patterns uh, while we're waiting for everybody to, uh, to catch up with us. Okay. And do remember if it is going a bit fast, then this is recorded and you do have the instructions um, in the PDF. If you didn't get the instructions, do drop Jane a message because uh, he can make sure um he can make sure that you uh, get a copy of that maybe your email wasn't quite right when you signed up or something okay how's it going everyone are we ready for cj to show us the real physical circuit yeah we've got some thumbs up um brilliant we've got some readies some ticks We've got a surprised face. I hope that's a good surprise face, Shian. Um, and Alec. Uh, and Arish, we've fab. All right, CJ, do you want, I will stop sharing. Um, and CJ can show you the real thing. Uh, oh, but CJ, ah, there we go. Yeah. Um, sorry, you, you went black for a minute, but oh. I think it might just have been me. We can see oh. your circuit now. Okay, great stuff. Um, okay, so we're going to get our button and place it over the middle strip and we're going to put two of the legs, one of the leg into F24 and the other leg into F22. 
and then the other two ends of the button are going to go across that middle strip and one leg is going into E24 and the other leg is in E22. So our button should sit across like that. So we've got E24, E22, F24 and um, F22. And it should sit nice and snug in there. Okay, so now um, to go to connecting it up. I'm gonna take one colored, I'm copying Sophie, so I'll use yellow. So I'm gonna put one end of this jumper wire the yellow one into D22 and the other one is going to go into our pin 3 on the Arduino. Not sure why it's lighting that LED up, I'll come back to that. I think that just might be something, but if we go to pin 3, there. Okay, so then we've got take our 1k ohm resistor so that's this one here one one of the ends is going to go into b22 and the other end of the leg we're putting it into the minus um strip on the LED, on the breadboard can just see it there that's um cj i think maybe uh you might have forgotten to unplug your arduino from your computer oh yeah sorry yeah i have that's naughty yes sorry everyone oh, it's really important not to have your yeah. um no. Ar arduino connected yeah. thanks sophie sorry about that right okay so one is going into three and the um, pin three and the other end is in the sorry that's the that's the previous step but yeah our resistor is now in um, the minus strip and into in B22. Then we have got to get connect up our other side of our button so we're going to take a red um, jumper wire and we'll put one end into D24 so that's the other end of the button and then the other is going to the five volts on the Arduino so it goes across to five volts 5v on the Arduino So one leg in D24 and the other one into the 5V pin. And then finally, um, yeah, no, that, that is now complete. I don't know, no, no, no. Have we done something? Um, Sorry, I've just, I may have made a slight mistake there. We need to put, keep one end of the jumper wire into D24, but put the other end, I just raced ahead, put the other end into the plus strip of the um, breadboard. And then we're gonna place one other positive wire into the breadboard plus line and the other end is going into 5v on the arduino i missed out a little step there but hopefully you've not got too confused by that and understood okay so that is the setup complete brilliant thank you cj um, so yes, 
we should now have a real circuit if you've got a real 3D one and a physical circuit. No, those are the same thing, Sophie. A real one and a virtual one, one on the computer. It's been a really long day, everybody. Um, I, can, I enjoyed the coding, right? Uh, okay, so um, if you didn't quite get all of the physical circuit, that's okay. You can just make it. You can just make it a bit later, following the instructions that CJ gave, and making sure that it looks like this beautiful circuit diagram uh, on here. So now, obviously, oh, sorry, just CJ. Just sorry about. Sorry, just about the color coding for the one k ohm resistor. Somebody's asked which one is the one k ohm resistor. There's obviously different depending on what pack you have. There's different colors for different one k ohms, but. If you have the blue color coding with the blue, uh, they have a base of blue, then you have to look for the one that's got the two red uh, rings on either end. Then following one of the red rings is a gold ring. And then after that, it's two, I think they're brown rings. I don't know if that's helpful to you, Jaden, if you have got a blue based ones. Can you remember the colours for the other? I think everybody does have blue in their packs. I think, oh, thanks. Okay, hopefully that's helped. Mm -hmm. And if you look, if you're getting a new resistor out of your pack, it will have it printed out on the little bit of tape that connects all the resistors together. So I'm going to just... Stop my crazy background. So you can hopefully see there's something printed on it. Um, so this is the one K, the one K resistor there. If you can just about see that printed out on that. Uh, I'm colorblind, so I find it really difficult to work out what the rings on the resistors mean. Um, so it means I get muddled up, but if um, if it doesn't work, you can always unplug your Arduino, put a different resistor in, plug it back in, and hopefully it'll work then. Yeah, shall I tell you all a secret? So I'm uh, using a, a kit from my big box of kits, uh, and someone has has left all of the resistors just in a big pile. So I'm, I think I've got the right ones, but I'm just going to play it. I'm, I'm going to try, and if it doesn't work, we'll try another one. Um, it's okay uh, if it doesn't work the first time. Awesome. Cool. I'm just going to uh, share my screen again so that we can do our coding. Um, we're gonna use a uh, block that is really, really, really useful. We use it all the time. Um, I'm sure Laura and Sarah will agree with me that this is one of the things that gets used literally all the time it's so important okay so to do the coding we're going to tick on code here we don't want the stuff that comes up automatically so we're just going to throw that in the rubbish bin and then what we're going to do uh, is we're going to start just like we did before with the repeat uh, while one equals one so telling the arduino to do this forever and ever so if you go to control, you can get repeat while. Uh, and this is just the same as before. So we'll go through this little bit quite quickly. Uh, repeat while, uh, and then in math, you've got this conditions, these little triangly ones, or ones with triangle aims. But instead of one is less than one, we want one is equal to one, okay? And then in here, what we want to do is we want to turn the LEDs on, but we don't want them to be on all the time, do we? We want them to be on only if the button is pressed, okay? And so for that, we are going to use the if block or the if then else block technically, um, which is an incredibly useful bit of code. It's basically just a way of asking your computer or your Arduino a question, and then the computer does something and what it does next depends on what the answer to that question is. So if you go to control, you'll see this um, block, if, then, else. Those of you who have done Scratch Ball have used this um, a lot before. And what we want to do is we want to know if the button 
has been pushed. Okay, so we're going to go to maths again. And we're going to do use the same thing that we used here. Um, so if something equals something else. So at the moment, uh, and I've changed that to an equals, at the moment I, I'm saying computers, does one equal one? And it does equal one. So it would do whatever was in this um, here, which is which will pop, pop in in a minute. But we want to find out what the button is saying. OK, so we're going to use uh, a new blob called input over here. We're going to go to input and you can see there are all these different things uh, that you can learn from any sensors or any input. So we're going to do this read digital pin and you pull this over and you pop it in here. OK. But this says read digital pin zero. And as you remember, there's nothing connected to pin zero over here. Our button is connected to pin three here. So we're going to change this number three. OK, so this is just asking the Arduino a question. Is the button equal to one? Now, you remember CJ and I were talking about this last time or maybe the time before. I can't remember. Um, but with digital digital pins, you can either have naught or one or sometimes we call it high and low. Sometimes we call it on and off, but it all means the same thing. Um, so we're going to say, does the digital pin three equal one? Is the button pressed? And if the button is pressed, then we want to turn our lights on. OK, so you'll remember where the. Um, where the turn the lights on. Um, block is that was an output because it's sending a message out. It says do something and we're going to set our pins, set our LEDs on. So we're going to set them both on. And the first one is pin 10. And the second one is pin 11. You do need to make sure that these pins here match what your pins are connected to, what your LEDs are connected to. OK. And then because we like it to be pretty, we don't want them just to be on. We're going to put a little pause between them. Yep. So we're going to have my red light turn on first and then wait for a little bit and then my green light turned on just because we can and it's nice to be pretty, isn't it? Uh, so you'll remember that in control, we've got this wait. We're going to wait um, after this and then we're going to wait for a moment after that. But waiting a whole second, I'm not very patient, so I'm not going to wait for a whole second. I'm going to wait for a small number of seconds, 0.3 seconds. You can pick what you want, but I wouldn't pick too long a number because otherwise you'll get impatient. OK, so that's what should happen. It will say, is the button pushed? And if the answer is yes, it'll turn the red LED on, pin 10 on, wait for a really short time and then turn the other LED on. And wait, and then it will ask the question again. Is the button still pushed? If the button isn't pushed, we want our LEDs to turn off, don't we? So we're going to do the same bit of code, but instead of having pin setting them to high, we're going to set them to low. Now, um, people who do a lot of coding tend to be really quite lazy. Sorry, Laura, but you know it's true. Um, we don't like doing more work than we have to. Um, and so uh, Tinkercad has a really neat function where instead of dragging out uh, these blocks again and changing them, um, getting new ones, we can just right click on the block. So I'm right clicking on this top one and then I can say duplicate. OK, and then you'll see it's duplicated that whole section for me. I can pop it here in the else thing. And that saved me so much time. Um, and we like saving time. The only thing we need to change now is instead of turning these pins on, these LEDs on, we want to turn them off. So I'm going to change that to low and that to low. All right. How is everybody doing? Give me a uh, make a reaction if you are ready to test out our code. Brilliant, Bilal and Aziz, you were fab. Oh, Shian's got a, Zane's having a party on his. That's awesome. Uh, we've got some hands up. 
uh, Jakob is doing well. Brilliant, Jakob. Um, we've got ticks and um, winky faces. Oh, a fist bump from Xi'an. That's a bit scary. Um, fantastic. Remember, if you're not quite there yet, that's absolutely fine. You've got all of the code. Uh, you've got all of the instructions here. And you can watch and you can pause us. Um, uh, you can pause us. You can rewind us. Um, you can uh, do it at your own pace while uh, when Dane has um, released the video, which is normally super quick because he's very efficient at these things. Um, much quicker than I am. OK, so let's see if we've done it right. So you'll remember um, on Tinkercad, the way to simulate it is we press this start simulation. Now, nothing's happening, which is good because the button isn't pressed, so nothing should be happening, right? So that's good. The way to test your button in Tinkercad is really simple. You just take your mouse over to your button and then click with your mouse. So I'm clicking now, and you can see that my light's turned on. And I'm going to release, and they turned off. So hooray, did it work? We, all of you, mine worked. Um, did anybody else's work? Sorry, I don't know why I just echoed. Hey, well done, Palm. Yours worked. Arish works. Yes, fantastic. Isabel, oh, you're honestly, you're you're all amazing at this. I'm so impressed. Um, whether it's yours isn't working quite yet, that's still absolutely fine, remember. We've got the code. Um, and the wonderful thing about simulating it is you can do it again and again until it works. Okay. Fab. Um, absolutely right. So I've had a really great question in the chat um, from Palm. Fantastic question. Can we make it so we only have to press the button once and it will continue to work until we press the button again? We absolutely can, Palm. But I'm going to leave that as an exercise for you. See if you can do it uh, on your code over the next week. Uh, and next week, we'll include in the PDF uh, some code that will do that. But see if you can do it um, on your own first. I think you probably can. Um, uh, right. OK. So now is the second moment of truth. We want to uh, send our code to, um, to our physical Arduinos, these ones here. Now we're going to do it a different way uh, this time because there are lots of different ways where you can use Arduinos. Um, we're going to use it, something called the Duino app, um, which is here. I'm just going to put a link in the chat. Now this only works on Chrome, um, but if you don't have Chrome, you can use the method that we used before, so cutting and pasting. Um, Pop the link in the chat because um, it's basically exactly the same. So we go to our code. Oh, over here. And oh, I'm still simulating. And then instead of blocks, we want to change from blocks to blocks plus text. OK, and you'll see we've still got our nice blocks. But we also have this text code and do have a look. Um, to see uh, if you can understand all of the different or all of the different bits. If you go to here, this Duino app, I pop the link in the chat, then you can click on this uh, button at the top called code. Okay, and then we want to create a new project. So I'm going to call my, own, my project Glow Your Own 3 because this is the third session. You don't have to put a description, um, so I'm just going to put a little one there. And then um, we have some code here. Now, it gives you some code, but I'm just going to highlight all of it. So Control-A and delete it, because that's not the code that we want. 
what we want is we want to take the code from Tinkercad, highlight all of it, and do make sure that you've got all of these little curly brackets because it's really important. It won't work without all of the brackets. Copy it, so Control C, um, and then paste it, Control V, into your Duino app. Um, if you are having problems with the Duino app, do or or anything, do send Sarah a direct message um, uh, or Laura a direct message. I know that uh, some of you are having problems on a Chromebook um, and we'll see if that works. We'll see if we can help you with that. Okay, so I've controlled that. And now I'm going to plug my Arduino in. So my Arduino is connected to my computer through my little um, thing. Down at the bottom, you want to make sure that the device that's selected is an Arduino Uno. Now, it normally comes up with that, but just double check because sometimes that can be a bit of a problem. Okay. Uh, and then you can um, just get to. So you select that and click connect, collect to that, and then hopefully that will work. So you've got serial selected. And then over here at the top, there's this button that says compile and upload. I'm sorry if I was echoing then, everyone. So you click that. Now, compile is the computer speak. We talked about that last time. Um, you just click that, and then you cross your fingers. You'll see it's compiling code. That basically means the computer's thinking about it. It's wondering if you've done a good enough job, if it's going to do what you want. Fabulous. It says it's 100% done. So it sent my instructions. Now, I'm a bit scared to do this in real life because I don't know if it's going to work because I haven't tested it this time. So I'm going to press my button and see if it works. And it doesn't, which probably means I've got the, um, uh, the wrong resistors. But has anybody else's worked? It didn't work for me either. But it did work when I followed the setup on Tinkercad. But when Laura's I followed, is working. When I followed the other one, it did work. So hopefully somewhere between. Palm's working. Yeah. Oh, sorry, CJ. I think I missed you. Ah, sorry. Mate, there's a bit of a lag, I think. Yes, I think you might be right. Oh, and actually, my LED just wasn't in properly. That's the other thing, and it is quite bright in here. Um, so, and we've got some that are working. Fantastic. Anybody want to, uh, if you are having problems, who can remember, who can help, especially those people who, uh, who's it worked, who can help and say, um, what we recommend to check if your real circuit isn't working, but your Tinkercad circuit is working. What were the things to check? Anyone remember? The orientation of the LED legs, fantastic. We often put them in the wrong way. I get mine in the wrong way most of the time. Um, I was using the wrong resistor, everyone, because um, look, uh, can you see my red LED flashing? Yep, Braille. And I'd put the wrong resistor in the other one, but I'm trying to find a new one. I okay. don't seem to be able to compile and upload in okay. the Gmail what, app. What? Oh. What problem, what does it say? Give you a, an issue, is your Arduino connected? Uh, so the Arduino is connected, yeah. Uh, and I can check and compile in yeah. Duino. But what I can't do is compile and upload. Okay, so if that's the case, um, I'm just going to close this so you can see down here at the bottom, does it say serial selected or does it say serial device? 
Aha, uh-huh, it's a serial device. Okay, down at the bottom, if it says serial device, click on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you'll see some options. If you pick Arduino Uno and then connect. Yay, Phil and Evan works. Fab. Mm. All right, CJ, do you want to show, is yours working? Do you want to um, show? Yeah, it was working and now it's stopped. Like the lights are being very, um, cause I've, I don't Is know yours... what's going on. I've ha- I'm having even technical issues myself. <laughs> One second. You see, we get it wrong a lot as well. Okay, we've got one lighting up. I think the other one's just a loose connection. Yeah. Um, I've changed mine over. So it will only work, remember, if you're pressing the, because of the code that we've written, it will only work if you are pressing the button. And once you stop pressing the button, the LEDs will turn off because that's what we've told it to do. Um, DJ, do you, I want me to highlight you? Um, well, you, you can, want- but just give me a few minutes. I've just got to like figure out why this is not uh, lighting up. Okay. I just... <laughs> Fab. It works perfectly, Luke. Brilliant. All right. I'm going to um, uh, show you on a different camera. Um, oh, no. Okay. Um, I'm going to show you on a different camera. Sorry about this technical issues. That's okay. It's good because it means Mm. that even we get it wrong. Mm, Yes, this is a good example. It is. All right. They're working, but they're not consistent. (laughs) That sounds like a loose connection to me. Yeah. Okay. Can everybody see my camera? So this is a bit of the breadboard, but I'm using a microscope. Um, You can see... Uh, the different bits that are connected. Fortunately, I can't quite make it small enough. So you, you're going to see a big uh, bit of microscope. Just focusing. Oh. Trying to focus. Okay. There, you can see there's my resistor can see everything connected. And now if I press the button, you can see, turns on. Oh, there we go, turns off. I'm pressing the button now. On, and off. Ah. So, Whose is working other than, I know that we've got some there. Danny and Lucas, mine is working, Finn and Evan's working. Brilliant. Oh, so someone, you don't select, if, you ha- if you're having any difficulties, um, do you pop them in the chat. Oh, Dane's is working. Fab. Congratulations, Dane. Yay. So it's, that was the simple trick, getting the Arduino to upload properly. Yep. Okay. All is tricky. I've got a really quick surprise, but you're going to have to be fast because my connection is very unstable. So from right. last week when I did my design, I'm going to present it to you now. Just going to turn off the lights. I can't find you, CJ. I'm trying One to second. highlight you. Okay, okay. I think we almost have liftoff. Ooh. Okay, this is my little uh, worm from last week, my glow worm. As you can tell, oh, my wow. connection is amazing. So that's a little bit of inspo, everybody. <laughs> so that's just like ours, but a bit bigger. <laughs> so I'm clicking the button, and I've I've put it into my glow worm that I draw drew from last week. 
That's brilliant. Uh, one of the connections is obviously a bit loose. Obs. Well, thanks well, for sharing that. So that's a really good example of how our small LEDs can be turned into something that, in terms of the coding and the way it works, is the same, but it's just bigger using different sorts of LEDs and a bit more kind of creative design. That's brilliant. Well done. That's nice yeah. work. Um, and we will show you as well about how we can extend the LEDs so you can fit them into things like this. That will be in, in one of our sessions remaining. Absolutely. And I'm so sorry, everyone. I've just realised that we were supposed to do batteries as well today. And I was just having such a lovely time with buttons that I forgot about it. Um, next week, next week, we'll do batteries. Or you can try yourself because there are instructions in the PDF that, we, that Dane sent around. It's really easy. So I could even show you right now because I've got all the bits. Yeah, all right. So ordinarily, you've got your USB that's connected to your Arduino plugged into your... I'm going to turn my crazy background off to make it so you can see a bit more easily. Let's take that off. So here's my... Uh, the Arduino and LED setup. So I press the button and it does what it's supposed to do, which is great. And then, but that is connected to my computer there, look. But what I do have is one of these power back tanks. So you might have used this for charging up your mobile phone or something. So it's got a little bit of charge in it. So you can see, and in the end, there is just a couple of USB slots. So to prove that you don't need to, and I haven't practiced this either, so I hope it does work. <laughs> uh, so to make it, you can just unplug your USB from your computer and then just pop it in. It's upside down. Pop it in to your Arduino. So all you've got now is a power supply. And if you wanted to, you can use the battery connector and there is a battery connector in some of your Arduino packs. And that connects with this little plug and that plug can go into this power adapter here, but I'm not gonna do that because all I'm doing is using a USB rechargeable battery pack and plugging that into my Arduino. And so it should be, if I press the button, it works, <laughs> but it's not doing it. So why is that not doing it? Well, it's supposed to just flash there <laughs> because there is charge in this battery pack. And, ah, oh, there we go, look. So it's just powered on a battery. And so it means that I can take this Arduino wherever I like. The is the brief instruction of how you can just use a battery. And now the whole Arduino and the LED is mobile. So you can put it wherever you like. Hope that made sense. And that's really useful for when you do make your little sculptures. That means that you can have the little lanterns or whatever anywhere in your room it doesn't have to be near your laptop connected up to your laptop so it's a really good useful thing to have you can use those battery packs or you can use even the nine volt batteries here that you can see so either one of those is is, pos is doable with that they have the connections with these ways. great okay well so we've made mobile push button arduino leds that's really good we're sort of halfway through six week course now um so i hope you're getting some confidence in coding and building circuits thanks everyone for joining in this glow your own session thanks sophie thanks sarah for helping out with the troubleshooting cj brilliant i love the glow worm that was a wonderful thanks. example of how uh, how we can extend our, our basic arduino kits to be even more fantastic and i hope to see you next week and we'll be doing even more stuff so obviously do code and tinker um, between the sessions if you'd like to um, but we're going to wind down now and just do some troubleshooting so we'll see you next time bye bye
Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thank you, everyone.